أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وخاتم النبيين ورحمة ربه للعالمين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين الأنصار والمهاجرين ومعيته إلى يوم الدين Dear brothers, dear sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah that we are convening this week uh, and we will continue to stroll with the meanings of these ayat in the Qur'an that bring to light the fact of the matter that stares us in the eye today and that is and we'll inshallah cover these ayat when we reach Surat Bani Israel or Surat Al Isra, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala foretells that these racist and racial types of discriminators and prejudiced uh, identifiers with Israel, <coughs> meaning. Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salatu wassalam and the high status that they have achieved in world affairs didn't come from nowhere they've been building on this for centuries and now they've reached the conclusion in which when they fall they will fall hard so let us continue with these penetrating meanings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divulges to us about their hidden nature. They can hide it from maybe the average person, but they cannot hide it from those who are living with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his revealed word and with his guiding emissary. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, <clears throat> so now we reach ayah 110 in Surah Al-Ma'idah and like we said there is um, a combination or there is an interlocking of events between Bani Israel and um, those who say that they are Christians. And also in this delicate history, there's a type of antagonism between those who identify as the children of Israel, Bani Israel, and Prophet Isa, the son of Maryam, alayhi salam. So in this ayah, ayah number 110, we are going to encounter the word Bani Israel, and therefore we are going to try to understand it together. <coughs> The ayah begins by saying, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمُ أُذْكُرْ نِعْمَتِي عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَى وَالِدَتِكَ إِذْ أَيَّدْتُكَ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا وَإِذْ عَلَّمْتُكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ والتورات والإنجيل وإذ تخلق من الطين كهيئة الطير فتنفق فيه فيكون طيرا بإذني 
وتبرئ الأكمه والأبرص بإذني وإذ تخرج الموتى بإذني وإذ كففت بني إسرائيل وإذ كففت بني إسرائيل عنك إذ جئتهم بالبينات فقال الذين كفروا منهم إن هذا إلا سحر مبين <coughs> The translation here is Bear in mind the time إذ when Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, said, bear in mind, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Isa ibn Maryam, to Jesus the son of Mary, Udhkur ni'mati alayk, <coughs> be conscious of my bounty to you, my blessing upon you. Udhkur ni'mati alayk. Idh ayyadtuk alayk wa ala walidatik. Bear in mind and be conscious of my plentitude to you and to your mother إذ أيدتك بروح القدس as I supported you with روح القدس تكلم الناس في المهد وكهلا you speak to people in the cradle and in advanced age وَإِذْ عَلَّمْتُكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّوْرَاةَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ And as I have imparted to you the knowledge of the book or the scripture and wisdom and in particular the Torah and the Injil, the Torah and the Gospel. وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُوا مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَتَنْفُخُوا فِيهِ فَيَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِي And bear in mind and be conscious of the fact that you create out of mud the resemblance of a bird and then you breathe into it and it becomes a real bird with my sanctioning and you cure al akmah wal abras that a person who has been born blind and the person who has the disease of leprosy with my sanctioning وَإِذْ تُخْرِجُوا الْمَوْتَى بِإِذْنِي and you bring back to life those who are dead with my meaning with Allah's sanctioning وَإِذْ كَفَفْتُ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ and bear in mind the fact that I prevented the belligerence of the children of Bani Israel from impacting you as you came to them with clear evidence for which those who were in denial 
of Allah from among the children of Israel said, but certainly this is nothing but obvious sorcery. That's the approximate translation. Any translator who's familiar with the Arabic in a profound sense, and then tries to transfer the meanings to another language, realizes that, well, I tried my best. So if you, I didn't go by the exact wording that I worked on in the Ascendant Quran. No. You, can, you can follow that and then follow what I am translating spontaneously here and you can combine the two to try to uh, synergize a more maybe meaningful translation. But anyways, we're going to go through the details of this ayah, inshallah. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to Isa ibn Maryam. And he's telling him, to be aware of the fact <clears throat> that Allah has blessed him and blessed his mother Maryam by support provided by Ruh al-Qudus. The, the wording here in the Quran is Iv ayyadtuka bi ruh al-Qudus. I have aided you, I meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have aided you, supported you, I gave you help with Ruh al-Qudus. Now, most of, if not the overwhelming majority, I, I didn't count, but most of the uh, commentators and those who explain the word Ruh al-Qudus and probably uh, they rely upon some hadith narrations and hadith as a body of literature has to be uh, rethought through which hasn't been done yet after 1400 years a task that still awaits those who are very serious about uh, prioritizing the Qur'an and then prioritizing the hadith in the context of the Qur'an. Anyways, they say that Ruh al-Qudus is Jibreel, the angel Gabriel. If it was Jibreel, in my humble um, comment on this, he would have said, إِذْ أَيَّدْتُكَ Jibril." Uh, that's not to deny that Ruh al-Qudus means Jibreel. But there's something specific about Jibreel that he has been given the name Ruh al-Qudus. Those two words independently, Ruh and al-Qudus, are established words. Ruh is soul or spirit depending and al-qudus is holiness sanctimony so the words by themselves are understood to a certain extent because we don't know what ruh is no one knows no human being knows no thinking being knows no scientist knows, no scholar knows what the ruh is. And this is stated in another surah, in another ayah in the Quran. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Some individuals came to the Prophet when this Quran was being revealed, instigated by Bani Israel, to ask the Prophet certain things. One of the things that they asked him to try to disprove him 
is could you tell us what the meaning of a ruh is? Could you explain to us what a ruh is? And the ayah from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala revealed the answer. قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Say, O Prophet, to these who are posing this question, a ruh is an affair belonging to my sustainer. And the amount of knowledge that you people have been given is minuscule, is so trivial. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا <coughs> That being what it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this ayah the communication that he had with the apostle and the messenger and the prophet Isa ibn Maryam. To kallimunasa, the ayah goes on, to kallimunasa fil mahdi wa kahla. You speak to the people in the cradle and in advanced age. <clears throat> تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا These are, this is something that is very unusual for a baby to speak to people when the baby is still in the cradle. An infant, a newborn, speaking to people. Of course, this is to borrow that much used word in the Judeo-Christian context, this is a miracle. And so Allah says, وَكَهْلَ And in advanced age, <clears throat> when you get around 40 years or more, كَهْلَ Now, why would Allah ask yourself, and there is a an intellectual controversy about whether Isa ibn Maryam is going to reappear in, uh, in, in the future. So some Muslims, scholars and non-scholars, they say that no, uh, he has already <coughs> expired for good, meaning he died. And there's not, once you die, there's no return to this world. That's a given. So they say that Isa <coughs> ibn Maryam has already died, and therefore uh, there's no sense in saying that he is going to return. <coughs> and then the other, uh, opi that's a minority opinion. The other majority opinion says, yes, Isa ibn Maryam is going to reappear because he did not die. He expired the way we expire in our sleep. But he will return. Uh, and then when he does return, he will speak to people. Now, that would explain why this sentence in this ayah says, that Isa ibn Maryam is going to speak to people in old age. Uh, just like it was a miracle for him to speak, Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam to speak as a newborn, it's going to be also a miracle for him to return to this world and speak uh, in the years when he will finish uh, his lifespan on earth. <coughs> the word al-mahd simply means um, it's not um, 
I mean, when we use the word cradle, I'm uh, curious to see when I was putting my mental effort into this to see how I translated this. And here we say, uh, Uh, where are we on? This is uh, A, 110. Cradle, yeah, the word cradle was used here. So, I mean, that's because the English, what are you going to say? This is, I'm going to explain the word al-mahad. Al-mahad means uh, a place where you, where a parent uh, places her or his newborn uh, to sleep. Um, and it has to be made uh, accommodating and um, you, ca you can't put a baby on a rough surface and expect the baby uh, to sleep. So the common sense, um, instinctual, drive in father and mother is to prepare a place that will um, that will be uh, cozy enough for the baby. <clears throat> There's no exact English word that delivers that meaning, but the cradle, I mean, when you say that, it's it comes somewhat close, and so we'll do with that. وَتُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا وَإِذْ عَلَّمْتُكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And bear in mind as the, as the bounty to you was that I taught you الْكِتَاب which means the scripture وَالْحِكْمَةِ wisdom <clears throat> Al-kitab could also mean writing. I taught you <clears throat> how to write. This forces us to think, having whatever amount of information we have about Isa, it forces us to think whether he went to school. I will say before I give you my... Um, explanation of this that my word is not the final word on this but as far as I know uh, the schooling of uh, religious knowledge at that time was among and from the rabbis <clears throat> and I I know nothing of Isa ibn Maryam being schooled by the rabbis so if he wasn't schooled by the rabbis, if he wasn't taught by the rabbis, if he wasn't educated by the rabbis, because he is from Bani Israel, then how did he obtain this knowledge? This ayah would be pointing us to the answer, and that is he obtained this knowledge by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealing to him this knowledge and this puts him outside the scholarly circle of the rabbinical class which could have been an argument by the rabbis of that time the learned elders of Bani Israel it could have been an argument that look he's not one of us he's not one of us quote unquote religiously he, we can't deny that he is one of us ethnically. And thus, this back and forth among those of the Jewish faith when it comes to Isa ibn Maryam. And if we wanted to extend this just a little to take the same understanding and look at our Islamic context, there are Islamic religious institutions and let's say there is a scholar or there is a learned person who did not graduate from these 
established Islamic institutions, whether they are universities, whether they are hausas, whether they are institutions of higher education, with whatever they are. <clears throat> what if a person comes along and begins to speak about Allah's message to mankind, not being, not belonging to that background? Well, are we going to behave like Bani Israel? Like Bani Israel behaved towards Isa? Or are we going to be mature enough to make room for the fact that Allah will choose whomever he chooses and it's not necessary that he receive the seal of approval of religious establishments? <clears throat> okay, so we go on. وَإِذْ عَلَّمْتُكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ it's not only that Isa ibn Maryam was a man who was school, learned and schooled in the knowledge of the Torah and the Injil, the Torah and the Gospel. There was no, in the rabbinical circles, there was no Gospel. It was only a Torah. But when Isa came, in addition to the Torah, now there was a complementary Injil, something that Regrettably, uh, Christians and Jews cannot come to terms to see the way we Muslims see it. And then the ayah goes on to say, "What if all of this? All of this to a, remember? This is a part of the history of Bani Israel. We're not going off on tangents here. We're not going, you know, into another direction. We're still following Bani Israel. This is part of their." deviational history. وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ بِإِذْنِ Now, <clears throat> let us uh, take a closer look at the wording of this ayah. وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطَّيْرِ كَهَيْئَةِ وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَتَنْفُقُ فِيهِ فَيَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِ the, the, the sentence in this ayah is saying, and bear in mind, Allah subhanahu is talking to Jesus. Bear in mind the fact that you create out of mud the resem the resemblance of a bird an avian a flying uh, a flying bird the a this is where some individuals don't pay close attention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Isa, now the word create, we know that the word, oh, the only creator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one creates except Allah. But just like the word Rabb, in the overwhelming majority of usages of the word refers to Allah. Rabbil Alameen, Rabbu Aba'ina, Rabbu Aba'ikum, Rabbu al Mashriqaini wal Maghribain, Rabbana, Rabbukum, etc. It's all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are a couple of, at least a couple of ayat in the Quran in which the word Rabb is used, but it refers to a human being. We spoke about this in Surah Yusuf. And here we are speaking about the word Takhluq and how it applies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how it applies to man. Inshallah, we will continue this um, 
uh, explanation next week. Bi idhnillah. May Allah be with us and with you. Stay with Allah and He will stay with you. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.